Now this here is an original Commodore 64 power supply. These units here are notorious for overheating due to the fact that they're actually filled with epoxy. The entire unit is pretty much unserviceable. Uh, some of the early black models, you can actually take some screws out and take it apart and repair it. However, the biggest majority of the ones you see are completely filled with epoxy. Even if you pry this plastic cover off, this thing is literally just a big chunk of epoxy with the components in it. So over time, this thing just basically sits there and cooks itself. Generally speaking, if you have one of these power supplies, the best thing you can do with it is simply throw it in a trash can. They're not worth owning. And actually, they're a liability. They're liable to burn up your equipment. Enter the Ray Carlson built power supplies. Ray has been repairing Commodore 8-bit machines for years and started building custom power supplies in 2014. These units are made of all brand new components and the overall design can be customized depending on your needs. They can be set up for 110 or 220 volt, attached AC cable or just an IEC plug for a removable computer style power cable, plastic or metal enclosure, and even if it's just for one computer or with multiple connectors so it can be used on either C64 or 128. And they have one of his computer saver protection devices to protect the Commodore from getting fried in case the power supply fails. Before I get started, let me go ahead and just unplug the power here. Okay, I got a screwdriver. We got safely unplugged from the power, unplug it from the Commodore. Let's go and start taking some screws out. Okay, got the last screw out. Let's go ahead and pop the top off, see what we have. Okay, first thing I notice, I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up so you can see it. First thing I notice is the nine volt AC transformer. That's where we get the AC voltage coming in that. Looks like it's nicely grounded to the chassis. We also have an inline fuse for it. Uh, this, this power supply looks like it has two, two forms of protection. Uh, has a fuse in line on the AC side, so in case transformer goes out or something like that, you, you have protection on the AC side. And then we also have this little guy down here. It's a little, it's a little black box with a series of resistors and zener diodes and stuff like that. That's the computer saver. Uh, basically, what that thing does is once the voltage gets above a certain level, the relay will kick on and cut off voltage completely going into the the DC side of things. Because um, once you get above about five and a half volts, you start um, frying chips on the motherboard, specifically I think RAM. I, th I think that's the first thing that goes once the DC voltage starts rising. Then over here, we have a small five volt DC switching power supply. Um, I'm not sure the exact specs on it. I can't really, short of actually taking out the machine and looking it over, or taking out, short of actually taking it out of the um, case, I can't really see a make model on it. But looking at the unit, I'm guessing that's probably good for a couple of amps. And then we have an IEC plug back here for a standard computer cable. So you can just plug that right in there. Whenever you purchase one of these through Ray, you can actually customize some of the um, design to it. Uh, as you can see with mine, I've got an IEC input on the back of it for a standard computer style cord. And you can customize that. You can either have a built-in cord or you can have an IEC style plug-in cord. Uh, then you have the cable coming out. Uh, this one in particular here is terminated with, uh, let's pull it up here. Terminated with a single Commodore 64 style connector. Uh, he actually offers this with both that and a um, dual connector output where you can actually power either a Commodore 64 or a 128 uh, case. Uh, pick the metal case. You can also go for the plastic case. Uh, and I'm sure the cable, you could probably pick how long you want that one. The default one is about four foot. Overall, this looks like it's a really well built unit. Uh, put together nicely, soldered nicely. Um, yeah, I don't really have any complaints as far as design. It does, it does what's supposed to be and it does it pretty well. My only complaints are, by default, the stock cable isn't really long. It's about four foot. I wouldn't mind seeing it a little longer, maybe six foot. But I'm sure if you ask Ray when you build one, ask him to make it longer, he will probably accommodate. And then the sidewalls, the front and back sidewalls, flex just a slight bit. Um, you could probably reinforce these so they don't do it. But that's, that's such a, a minor nitpick. It's not really a big deal. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed taking a quick peek inside of a great third-party power supply for your Commodore. Well, thanks for watching this brief video on Ray Carlson's power supply, and I hope to see you in the next video.